And hello class, in this video, we're gonna be covering section 8.4, which is the fundamental properties. So in this section is basically like an introduction to probability. So before we can put the chances or the probabilities of things using the permutations and the combinations, they kind of wanna warm you up to the idea of what the heck is probability to begin with. Um, and then they'll lay it in thick with the permutations and the combinations, okay? So that next section will be a little bit more complicated than this one, okay? But of course, it's my job to try to lay it all out, decipher through it, make it make sense to you, okay? Um, and then show you how to actually compute these things and what's going on in each scenario, okay? So for this particular section, there are 17 questions. There's a little bit more in this section just because they're trying to get you used to the idea. This is something completely new, um, a lot different than what we were doing in the previous sections. So for number one, it says a 12-sided die is rolled. The set of equally likely outcomes is one through 12, right? Find the probability of rolling a number less than seven. So what I did was, is I underlined all the values that were less than seven. And so I'm just basically figuring out what is the probability that one of these numbers will happen out of all of the 12 possibilities, okay? Um, and so on probability, they do have this here. So it says the number of outcomes in E, okay? So, and then over the total possible outcomes. So this is a total possible outcomes, and I want to know the number of outcomes that I'm going to have that are less than seven. So there are actually six values that are less than seven out of the 12 possible combination or 12 possible outcomes. This can be reduced in your calculator to just one half. Now, number two says a 12-sided die is rolled. The set of equally likely outcomes is again, one through 12. Find the probability of rolling a number greater than 21. Now that doesn't make sense because it is impossible to roll a 21 or anything higher than 12. The highest roll is 12. Okay, because you're only rolling one of these die. It's not like you're rolling two of them. You're only rolling one. Um, and so the probability of rolling a number greater than 21 is zero. You're not ever going to roll something greater than zero. I mean, greater than 12. And certainly, definitely not greater than 21. Now, for 50, number three, you are dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck. Find the probability of being dealt a three. Now keep in mind that in a deck of cards, now I play cards and I do card tricks and all kinds of stuff. So, and some of them are mathematically um, inspired, I guess you would say. So I know the cards <laughs> really well. Um, so for me, it's a no brainer. I know that there are four different threes in a deck of cards. There's three of diamonds, the three of hearts, the three of spades, and the three of clubs, okay? Or three of clubs and then the three of spades. So for this particular section, since there's three possible outcomes of getting a three, my not, I'm sorry, if there's four possible outcomes of getting a three, then four goes in my numerator out of the total possible outcomes. Remember, there's 52 cards in this deck. So the denominator is 52. If I reduce that in my calculator, I do get one over 13. And so that is the probability of doing of being dealt a three. Um, number four says, you are dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck. Find the probability of being dealt a heart. And so in the hearts, I know that there are 13 possibilities. But for those that are not familiar with cards, I did write out specifically what those possibilities were. So you could get the ace of hearts, two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, five of hearts, six of hearts, seven of hearts, eight of hearts, nine of hearts, 10 of hearts, jack of hearts, queen of hearts, or king of hearts. And so there are 13 possible outcomes for the hearts. 
over the total number of possibilities. Remember, it's a 52 card deck. So that would be 52 at the denominator. You reduce that fraction in your calculator and you get one over four. Now, number five says a fair coin is tossed three times in succession. That just means they do it once, then they do it again, then they do it a third time, okay? It doesn't mean that they take three coins and flip them all together at the same time, okay? Um, the set of equally likely outcomes is all three could be heads. You could get a head, a head, and then a tails. You could get a head, a tails, and a head. A tails, a head, and a head. A head, a tails, and a tails. A tails, a head, and a tails. A tails, a tails, and a head. And a tails, a tails, and a tails. Okay. So those are all the different possibilities. Now find the probability of getting exactly two heads. So we actually had to figure out, and I actually did this one wrong because I counted the ones that had two tails instead of the ones that had two heads. It just coincidentally came out the same. If I have exactly two heads, that would be this case with exactly two heads. It would be this case with exactly two heads. It would be this case with exactly two heads. And that's the only, those are the only three options that have exactly two heads. So I have three outcomes with exactly two heads. Out of how many possibilities? One, two, oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. So it's three out of eight. And when I typed that in my calculator, it did not reduce. And so therefore I left it as the fraction three over eight. Number six says a fair coin is tossed three times in succession. The set of equally likely outcomes are these guys here. Find the probability of getting a head on the second toss. So just the second toss, here I got a head on the second toss, here I got a head on the second toss, that's a tails on the second toss. Here's a head on the second toss, tails on the second toss, head on the second toss, tails and tails. So there are one, two, three, four outcomes that have a head as the second toss. So that's four out of how many total outcomes? Total outcomes was eight. So four out of eight does reduce and it reduces to one half. Now, number seven says, um, you select a family with four children. If M represents a male child and F a female child, the set of equally likely outcomes for the children's genders are all females, three females and a male, and then the order here matters, right? So like your first child's a female, your second child's a female, your third child's a female, and then your fourth child is a male. That's like me, but with only three kids. <laughs> so female, female, male for me. Um, then here's the other option. So your first two were female, then your third was a male, and then your fourth was a female, right? And it goes on and on and on and on. There's all the possibilities, okay? It says, find the probability of selecting a family with exactly two female children, okay? So I did do this particular problem incorrectly. So two female children. So if I'm trying to figure out the one with two female children, that would be here I have two female children, here I have two female children, here I have two female children, there, 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 and that's it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them with exactly two female children out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 options. And so if I type six over 16 in my calculator, it does simplify it to three over eight. And so then you get three over eight. Oh, not two. What am I reading? I don't know what I was reading. I was right the first time. I just can't read this time. I'm getting nervous. No, I'm just um, but <laughs> I don't know why I saw the word two right there, but it's not two, it's zero. It says, find the probability of selecting a family with exactly zero female children. Well, there was only one option that had no female children, and it was this one. So 
So it was actually one outcome out of 16 total possible outcomes, which could not reduce. And so it is just one over 16. That's what it was. Okay. Now, number eight says you select a family with three children. If M represents a male child and F a female child, the set of equally likely outcomes for the children's genders are shown below. Find the probability of selecting a family with at least one male. That means they could have one male, two males, or three males, just at least one, okay? So basically, it's all of these except for that one because that's the only option that doesn't have any males at all, okay? So out of the total eight possible outcomes, seven of them meet this criteria. So it's seven out of eight, which does not reduce. So it does just say seven over eight. So we're almost halfway through. Now, number nine says a single die is rolled twice. The 36 equally likely outcomes are shown to the right. Find the probability of getting two numbers whose sum is four, okay? So I tried to go through this and find all the values whose sum is four, okay? So I use the chart and I noticed that three plus one, two plus two, and one plus three was four. So there were three possibilities out of the total 36 like equally likely outcomes. So I reduced this fraction and the calculator said it was one over 12. Now numbers 10 and 11, I also used the same chart because I didn't want to recreate it. So for number 10, it says two fair dice are rolled, determine the probability that the sum of the two dice is five or nine. So this time I tried to go through and find um, the sums that were five or nine. So four plus one, three plus two, two plus three, one plus four. And then um, for nine, it was uh, six plus three, five plus four, four plus five, and three plus six. So there were actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options that sum to equal five or nine. So eight out of the 36 reduced down to two over nine. Um, and then number 11, I did the same thing. I used the same chart. I wasn't gonna recreate that. I mean, I could have, but I wasn't gonna because it's just a waste of time when it's already right there on the page. So number 11 says two fair dice are rolled. Determine the probability that the sum of the two dice is five or 11, okay? now. For five, I've already done for five. I just put the little marks because I'm doing number 11 now and not number 10. So I use circles for number nine, underlines for number 10. And now I'm using like, I don't know, an apostrophe, if that's what you want to call it, an apostrophe for number 11. So if I'm identifying the sets for number 11, um, these four sum up to give me five. And then these two sum up to give me 11. Okay, so that means there's four plus two more. There's actually six total options or outcomes that could equal five, sum to equal five or 11. Out of the 36 total, reduces the fraction to one over six. Now, for number 12, it says, use the spinner shown to answer the question. Assume that it is equally probable that the pointer will land on any one of the colored regions. If the pointer lands on a borderline, spin again. If the spinner is spun once, find the probability that the pointer lands in a blue region, okay? So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the fact that there are two blue regions out of the total eight slices here that you have on this board, okay? So two out of eight actually reduces to one over four. So I have a quarter of a chance, 25% chance to land on a blue. And since we're talking about probability, um, I remember when I was taking a higher level statistics class, because this is the beginning of statistics. Um, but when I was taking a higher level statistics class, they did show us like how to figure out the probabilities of all the games in Vegas. 
And I mean, that was a really interesting lesson. I mean, we were all invested because we're like, yeah, we want to know what we need to, <laughs> what games we should stay away from when we play um, games in Vegas. And it turns out the blackjack is the one with the best odds. So I've never been to Vegas. I plan to go very soon. I'm already 40 and I really, really, really want to go to Vegas <laughs> just because I've never been. Um, and so if I do go, that is definitely going to be the game that I stick to because I know mathematically by statistics that that one is the one to go for. Um, although I might dabble in some of the others just, just to play them, right? But I'll probably stick at the blackjack table. Plus, I'm great with cards, so that might be my best bet. Um, number 13, moving on. <laughs> Uh, we have sickle cell anemia in an inherited disease in which red blood cells become distorted and deprived of oxygen. A person with two sickle cell genes will have the disease, but a person with only one sickle cell gene will have a mild non-fatal anemia sickle cell trait. Using S to represent a healthy gene and capital S and little s the sickle cell gene, the table shows the four possibilities for children with two SS parents, okay? Um, find the probability that these parents give birth to a child who has sickle cell anemia. So the first parent has both of these and the second parent has both of these. And so they're basically telling you all the combinations of how your DNA, I guess, can be created. So it's possible that you could get both of the capital S's or a child could get both of the capital S's. It's possible that the child could get a capital S and a little s. They can get a little s and a capital S or they can get two little s's. Okay, those are four possibilities for the genes. Now, um, it says find the probability that these parents give birth to a child who has sickle cell anemia. Well, remember, little s represents the sickle cell gene. And in order for you to have sickle cell, it says that you had to have two of the sickle cell genes, okay? So that means we're looking for the double lowercase s's. And in this little chart of outcomes, there's only one of those options out of the four total op uh, outcomes. So one outcome meets this criteria out of the four total outcomes, and I can't reduce that. So that is the answer there. Now, it says sickle cell anemia is an inherited disease in which the red blood cells become distorted and deprived of oxygen. It's the same scenario here. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing all over again, but I am going to read the bottom. It says, find the probability that these parents give birth to a child who has sickle cell anemia. Okay. Um, but notice that this time the parents are different. One parent has the little s. And the other parent does not have any little s's, is completely healthy as far as sickle cell anemia is concerned, okay? So when we do all the pairings, you have two capital S's, two capital S's, capital S and a little s, and a capital S and a little s. Now remember, two lowercase s's equals a child with sickle cell. Since there are no little double little s's on this chart, then there is a zero chance that that's going to happen, okay? And so even if I do zero out of zero out of the four possibilities, it's still going to turn out to be a zero probability chance. It's just not possible with that one healthy parent. As long as one of the parents are healthy, you won't have sickle cell anemia. Okay, you could have the regular little non-fatal anemia, but not sickle cell anemia. Now, let's see. Number 15 says, the table shows the distribution by age and gender of the 31.5 million people in a certain region who live alone. Use the data in the table to find the probability that a randomly selected person in the region 
is a woman of the age 18 through 24 age range living alone. So I basically tried to calculate where are the females that are ages 18 through 24. I circled those, that's that. So this is the total number of outcomes that meet the criteria. So that's my numerator. But then the denominator is supposed to be the total number of all outcomes. So not just the total of these ages or these ages or these ages, and not just the total for females or for males. We're talking the absolute total, which happens to be this bottom right corner, which is 31.5. So when you take this, when you take this ratio in your calculator, you end up with this decimal, but it does say to round to the nearest hundred. So this is tenths, hundredths, and the nine does make the one go up to a two. So we entered 0 0.02 in the box. So for number 16, we have um, the table below shows the educational attainment of a country's population, age 25 and over. Use the data in the table expressed in millions to find the probability that a randomly selected citizen age 25 or over had four years of high school only, okay? So I looked at the chart and I found the section that said four years of high school only. Now it didn't say specifically that they had to be male or female. So what I took was is the total of both all the male and the females with um, only four years of high school. So I took the 48 over the total number of outcomes. Remember, that's the complete total, not the total females, not the total high school, not the total college, but complete total, which is this bottom right-hand corner. So I took the 48 um, people with the high school only over the total number of people altogether, and I simplified this ratio, and it, it reduced down to 12 over 41. Now, number 17 is the same stuff, same table, same, I mean, there's different numbers in the table, but it's the same kind of table with the same kind of information. But this time it says, um, find the probability that a randomly selected citizen age 25 or over was a man with some college, okay, less than four years. So I went to the area where there was some college less than four years, and the man, the males only, and that was this value here. So this is the, the outcomes that meet the criteria, but I do have to divide it by the total number of outcomes, which was 162. I did type 18 over 162 in my calculator and it did reduce it to one over nine. And so that is the end of this particular section. The next section, We'll be putting all of this information we know about probability together with what we had learned about permutations and combinations. So it'll be slightly a little bit more complicated, but we'll get through it and I'll do my best to break it down for you, okay? So I'll see you in the next video.